For our 6881 final project, we investigated different methods of post estimation for the YCB tomato soup can. We also completed a pipeline of standard methods of path planning and inverse kinematics for a full upright pick and play system. The first method used ICP with segmentation via mask RCNN. This process involved simulating dropping a soup can into a bin and taking an RGBD image. We then feed only the RGB into a mask RCNN, which outputs a mask image as seen in the upright of the slide, telling us which pixels contain the can. We can then use this segmentation of the depth image to create a point cloud of only the can. The mask RCNN architecture is largely built on top of the faster RCNN architecture with an extra branch at the end to compute the mask. We use PyTorch's implementation of mask RCNN with a ResNet50 backbone pre-trained on the COCO dataset. In order to train it for our situation, we simply replace the two head branches with fresh layers and train the whole system on a thousand images from our simulation. Once we have our segmented point cloud of the CAN, we can perform ICP with a previously known full point cloud of the CAN. We quickly found that initial guesses of our pose had a large effect on the performance, as ICP often found local minima orthogonal to the true pose. To mitigate this issue, we run ICP with three initial poses and choose the final estimation with the lowest RMSE distance corresponding points between the depth image and point cloud of the true can. While this helped align the point clouds, the symmetries inherent in the soup can mean that the pose could be rotated about the can or flipped pi radians across the can without affecting the point cloud alignment. This insufficiency of ICP resulted in high error when estimating poses. So aside from the networks that Alex worked with, I also implemented a simple neural network for estimating the CAN pose from rendered images of the scene. This pose interpreter network extends the ResNet 18 architecture and outputs the estimated pose of the soup can. Subsequently, to test the aforementioned networks, I adapted the door opening problem set code to do upright pick and place of the can from its random initial pose, bin. Initially, the system computes seven keyframes, moving the hand to a pre-grass pose above the bin, grabbing the can, and moving the, to drop the can upright on the table. Finding the grass pose was similar to finding the door handle grass pose. Given the estimated or true pose of the can, the end effector z-axis simply had to align with the soup can's y-axis, which runs along its length. This makes it easy to place the can upright, as the can's y-axis simply must point downwards when it is let go onto the table. Next, I interpolated between the key poses. This allows the system to compute desired poses as a function of time. We calculated 30 of them, spaced uniformly throughout the total runtime. From there, the joint angles needed to achieve each of the poses were computed using a nonlinear optimization, where the objective function is the L2 distance of the angles to a set of constant nominal ones, and the constraints force the end effector to be relatively close to the desired poses. Finally, the robot executes these joint angles in order, successfully placing the can on the table, as shown in this video. To integrate the perception and upright pick and place subsystems, I created this pipeline. The can is initialized and rendered in a random pose in the bin. This image is then fed into one of our pose estimators, which computes its pose. Finally, its pose is fed into the pick and place system, which attempts to pick up and place the can upright using this estimated pose to compute the grass pose. We evaluate both of our methods along two different metrics, one being the mean chordal distance and the other being the actual success rate of picking up and placing down the soup can. As you can see, the pose interpreter worked best across the board with a lower mean coral distance and a higher success rate. Thank you.